You're listening to Brain Buster Radio. Hey, yo, Josh, let me get a little bit of reverb. Yeah. J. Will. Yeah, I'm about that lifestyle. I talk green work, repping it all over. It's right on the T-shirt. Been for a lifetime. Yeah, that's a long past. Figure I would show some love right on the podcast. Turn this up loud and make sure you don't do nothing else. Cause if you're listening to us, then you're improving your health. My name is J. Will. Welcome to the show, yeah. Wrestle, flow, 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 yeah. Welcome to Wrestling Reverb, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. I am Kevin. Josh is here as well. Josh, how you doing on this fine Wednesday or I'm Thursday just, for you? It's, yeah, it's Thursday for me. It's sunny out today. Now, um, I will quickly note that there's construction next door to my house. So if at any point you hear some loud machinery, it's, it's next door to my house. Just ignore it, everybody. We will do our best to do so. But it's a very special week here on uh, on Brain Buster Radio. Josh, what are, what are we doing this week? What, 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 what makes this week so special? What makes this week stand out? Well, it is G1 week. It is G1 week this week. Hence, why you're hearing Kevin's voice first and, and, and not mine. I, 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 have, I am the co-host this week. I'm taking the, the back seat, I guess. From you, you're taking the reins, because, listen, you can attest to this, Kevin, I'm a big dum-dum when it comes to anything that isn't really WWE or AEW. (laughs) Really, I'm kind of a moron when it comes to it, so, Kevin, Kevin's on it. (laughs) That's that's (laughs) the main takeaway from this show, let it be that Josh is a big old dum-dum. Yeah. Proudly, honestly. Proud dum-dum. And I do feel I should disclaim as well that I'm not the biggest expert on New Japan professional wrestling. Oh, I'm this just is re- just I'm, this is more just like, you know, I'm a bigger dum dum than you. <laughs> yeah, Josh is a big dum dum. I'm a medium sized dum dum. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it that way. Um, Kevin, before I um, you know, before you take away with this G1 week stuff, I'm gonna put my two cents in here. Is that um. You may not hear heaps from me today because I don't want to uninformally say something that's just stupid. But you'll hear me here and there when when Kevin um Kevin gives me the chance, I'll I'll say what I can, but um Kevin knows as much as everybody else that um I don't really have too many uh I guess knowledgeable opinions on a lot of these people. Not all of them. I'm I'm not sh- completely stupid. I kind of know the premise, but I didn't even really know how the G1 tournament works other than that, then that it's a huge, like, month-long tournament or some something. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's hence, hence why we're calling this episode G1 for Dummies, because... And that's not meant to be derogatory, it's just a, a catchy title. Because there are a lot of people out there who are, like us, WWE-centric fans. And, you know, they might not, like you, they might not know what the G1 Climax is all about. Luckily, I have taken it upon myself to watch last year's G1 in its entirety. So I have an idea of what the tournament entails, what it's about, what's so cool about it, all that good shit. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to take you through the G1. We're going to take you through the rules. And then we're going to take you through the competitors and introduce each competitor to you so that you'll have a better understanding of who's wrestling who and who's good and who's bad and who I hate and who I love. Because I, there's some there's some love and there's some hate in this tournament. That's for sure. Oh, but anyway. Well, before you, um, before you go with the rules... And that, Kevin, I'm going to explain to you what... I'm, I'm not even going to explain to you. I'm going to give my take on what I think the rules are. Because I know there's... It's, like, very, like... All I know about the G1 Climax is that it's very, like... Set in its ways with the way it is... How the rules are. Am I correct in that? 
Yes, the rules have been the same. Um, the last rule change, I believe, came in 2012. Oh, okay. Um, it's So it's it's a month-long tournament, yes? Am I right in that? That is correct. It and, runs throughout the month of July into August. And there's two blocks. There are two blocks, A block and B block. A yes. block and B block. And, like, is it the winner of each block goes against each other at the end? Is that the end game here? Yes, that is the See, you know what you're talking about. Yes, look at me, the winner look of at A me. Look at me, bitches. I'm like a little New Japan <laughs> fucking pro. Yeah, dude. You may as well. You want to take over? <laughs> uh, that would be the end of the episode if I did. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a it's a mini. It's a Wolf Daily sized episode of Brain Buster. <laughs> episode of Wrestling Reaver. Watch out, Brain Wolf. Bu- we're coming for your brand. <laughs> yeah, we're taking over. Um, okay, so let's let's jump in. Josh uh, hit on a few important points about the rules. The G1 Climax is a month long tournament. Starts on Saturday and runs through. Sometime, I think, the second week of August. And basically what it is, it is a giant tournament, a 20-man tournament, to determine who goes on to face the IWGP heavyweight champion at Wrestle Kingdom, which is the WrestleMania of Japan. Now, how it works, the 20 competitors are separated into two blocks, A block and B block. The winner of A Block meets the winner of B Block in the finals. And the winner goes on to face the IWGP Heavyweight Champion. Now, the rules are, you face 10 people in a block, so you have 9 matches. You'll face everyone in your block once. A win gets you 2 points. A draw gets you 1. And a loss gets you a big, fat, fucking 0. Okay, so it's point system here. What yes. what's the for all the dummies that are listening to this going? I still don't know what you mean. Was there not some kind of a point system in TNA a few years ago? Yeah, Bound for Glory. Yeah, yeah they had a they had a similar thing where you faced. It was it wasn't a block set up like this. It was just basically like you faced other wrestlers and earned points towards Bound for Glory. There was um, so many th- rules in that Bound for Glory series, though. It was like, you get so many points for a DQ or a countout or a pinfall or a submission. Like, it was confusing. But for yeah. all the dummies out there, there, it's a similar premise with earning points, I guess, in layman's terms. Yeah. Earning points is the name of the game. You earn points by beating your competitors. And to allude to what Josh was saying about the confusingness of the rules in TNA, because they were confusing. DQs, countouts, submissions, and pins all count for the same two points. Now, one thing to note about countouts, while they do happen, and uh, there was one last year between Toru Yano and Sonata, who we'll talk a little bit about more later, there was a countout, just the same two points, and Japan operates under a 20 count. Not the the usual 10 count you see in WWE. It's a 20 count. I knew that. Which is why you probably... 19, 19. Yes. 16, <laughs> 7, and, they... and what I love about the announcers is that, like, the, for the first 13, 14 seconds, they're just like, 1, 2, 3. And then it gets to, like, 15, they're like, 15, 16, 17. 19. And it's how they really want you to get back in the ring. <laughs> and usually they do. Um, the match in question from last year featured some duct tape and a barricade, and that's why one wrestler was counted out. Pretty goofy. Oh, shit. Well, again, we'll, we'll touch on that more later because there's one wrestler in this tournament that is known for his goofiness, and, and he is an absolute delight, and we'll talk about him later. But I'm trying to think of what else. Okay. So, yeah, so the winner defends his title. There, The winner gets to go on to Wrestle Kingdom and face the IWGP Heavyweight Champion. But... The IWGP heavyweight champion is also a competitor in this tournament. So what happens when he wins, you say? It hasn't happened in 19 years. It hasn't happened since 2000 when uh, Kensuke Sasaki, I believe it was, won the G1. Now when that happens, in the off chance it happens, and you never know, uh, the champion gets to appoint a challenger of his choosing to face at Wrestle Kingdom. 
Again, that that is very rare. Doesn't happen often. And I don't think we're going to see it again this year. So I don't think you have to look out for that too much. Now, on the flip side, the winner of the G1 has to defend the uh, the contract, so to speak. The certificate is called against other competitors on the road to Wrestle Kingdom. Typically, if the winner lost to, say, two wrestlers in his, in his block, he'll have to face them, usually, in matches along the way and defend that, that right to have a match at Wrestle Kingdom. Right. I will say that that rule was implemented in 2012, and that's n- the the title. The contract has never been um, lost. Right. It's so it's so, I'm, so again, dummy, dummy over here. So, in a weird sense of the way, so I can get my brain around this, it's almost like when someone wins the Royal Rumble and they go to the February pay per view and have to defend their title shot. Correct? Bingo. Okay, Bingo. I'm on the no. I'm on the train here, guys. I'm learning. I am learning. It's Friday, of course. You're listening to Wrestling Reverb. It's Friday, so therefore, I'm learning. I'm learning something. I'm I'm happy. Learning on a Friday always good, always good. But yeah, it's a tradition for the for the winner of the tournament to defend his his right, his contract a couple of times. It's never been lost though. And again, I don't really think they're gonna have it that way. I don't think they're gonna they're gonna have someone lose the right to face uh, the champion at Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, by the way, the champion currently is Kazuchika Okada. I need that. Who we'll one. talk about in just a second. Josh, are you aware of Kazuchika Okada? I am. I know who Okada is. I've wa- I watched like the the majority of the main New Japan shows. Like I don't yeah. watch everything, and I keep tabs. Like I'm I'm not completely foreign to. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yeah, and he's a guy that, if you watch the main shows, he's in, like, the main event of all the main shows. He just fought Jericho, yeah, at Dominion. Yeah. He's someone who transcends New Japan. He's a wrestler known around the world. Yeah. A lot of people call him the best pro wrestler on the planet. I don't necessarily agree with that. I'm not, like, a huge Okada fan, but I I I respect the fact that he's had some of the best matches I've ever seen. Okay, all right. I, I know who Okada is, and I, yeah, I know who. Actually, Kevin, I might surprise you with how many people I know, but we'll get into that soon. I'm, look, I'm looking forward. We're almost there. I'm trying to think if there's any more rules I missed. Not really. Um, the G One's a tournament of honor. You don't see too many DQ finishes, except for last year. You don't see too many. Um, you know, you don't see too much interference except for last year, and I'll talk about last year when we get the, when we get into the, the competitors. Last year was a bit of a, an outlier as far as G1s go, but usually you don't see a lot of outside interference, even amongst you know factions and stables. Even the bad guys sort of play it by the rules here because this is a tournament for the world title, basically, and you want to take advantage of that opportunity, right? I mean, you know, that's not every day you get handed an IWGP Heavyweight Championship match. Well, no, it's, it's I've not. never been handed. So nope. it seems to me that New Japan and the G1 Climax, or whatever, um, is very tradition based. Yes. Okay. Yes, a lot of tradition, a lot of you know, not not a lot of new school stuff. Um, it's the very old school, and there's people that are respected. There's people that won't like it. I get it. I I'm, I happen to be a fan of it. You know, just the old school wrestling, just wrestling, not sports entertainment. Uh, I've gotten definitely gotten into it over the years. Over the year, I should say. Over the month, I should say. Yeah. I watched, I watched Dominion and decided, hey, I should subscribe to New Japan World and watch a bunch of shit. And that's what I'm doing now. Look at you go. Look at me go, indeed. I am killing the game. But anyway, uh, it's a, a, the, the rule, there's, not me- there's not much to it. The rules aren't too difficult. You know, it's just sussing out how okay oh there's one more thing i'm looking at last year's results so you'll see because because of the way two points go, you'll see a lot of ties and tie the tiebreaker is basically who you beat say two dudes finish the top of the block with say 12 points each the per, whichever one of them beat the other gets to move on to the finals if that makes sense okay i get that 
Yeah, I, I, that's like pretty typical in sports too. Like head, tie tiebreakers, tie the head to head record. Um, if they if they played to a draw, I honestly have no clue what would happen. <laughs> if you have two guys at twelve and they tied, they they wrestle to a draw. I honestly don't know what would happen. Um, you you you'd probably see someone leapfrog them. I don't think that's ever happened though. Oh. At least not to my knowledge. They've never had a situation like that. Uh, so <laughs> Kevin, hopefully this with, happen- Kevin with the knowledgeable I'm, facts here. <laughs> I am just you know again. I'm a I'm, I'm a medium sized dummy. I am learning a little bit here. I'm 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 perusing I'm perusing the uh, Chi One Climax Wikipedia page and trying to figure some <laughs> shit out. Little do you know, I just went and edited all of that Wikipedia page. <laughs> Is that why it says Josh Robinson had 12 points in last year's G1? Yeah. I didn't win. Wow. Did, wait, is that a... That doesn't... How many points is it to win this? <laughs> well, it could be any amount of points. I'll, I'll tell you, last year in Block A, the winner had 15. Oh, well, I'm not and far off. B, the win, and in Block B, the winner had 12. So you could have won Block B. Ah, yes. Okay, well... Maybe you did. Maybe I did and you just didn't even fucking realize... I, I must have missed that match, yeah. I know, as well as all of your matches, because you have to have had nine matches that I missed. <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not, like, known for, like, my classic bouts, but I get the win. Yeah, you're a, you're, you're a, you're a sneaky guy. You get, you get wins, you, you climb the card, you're not someone people expect to win, but you're always there. Mm-hmm. I've come in with the roll-up at the end. Love a good, yes. love a good schoolboy, you know? Oh my god, love a nice, love a nice, uh, O'Connor roll. Hey, uh, another... off topic, but I really do like a nice roll-up finish. I'm not gonna lie to you, I love a quick finish like that. I think, I think it's perfect for a match between two competitors who are so evenly matched that one of them has to resort to a roll-up to win. That's my kind of, ma- that's like my, uh, that's like my, my kind of match. Yeah, some people hate, like, an O'Connor roll or a schoolboy finish like after a long match but i i hey i find it like you have to do anything to win but anyway i digress my dog is licking the back fence at the moment i don't know why whatever oh hopefully there's no lead based paint on that fence (laughs) no he's my dog's stupid let's not go there um g1 for dummies you just try explaining it to my dog i will get him (laughs) get him get him in the studio (laughs) Oh, man. Anyway, back to the wonderful explaining you're doing over there, Kevin. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to move on because I'm about out of rules. Um, I think I've explained how the tournament works to its fullest satisfaction. Now we're going to talk some competitors because there are 20 of them. And they each bring something very different to the table. We'll start with the man, the main man. The IWGP heavyweight champ, Kazuchika Okada. Now, Okada has been champion for da, 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 four months, I'd say. I know. He wait, won- wait. I know this. I know this. Didn't Jay White beat him at some stage and then he won it back? Jay White beat uh, now another competitor for the belt. And Okada yeah. beat Jay White for the belt at that super card show at Madison Square Garden back in March. I knew I was close. Dang. You were close. Jay White was a name that was in that that was in that sentence. So you got him right. Eh. And he was the champ, so I knew that. Yeah, so Kyle dethroned Jay White at G1 Supercard at Madison Square Garden. Since then, I don't even I th- I think he defended the title against White again and Chris Jericho at Dominion. I knew which that. I think you might have forgot. Yeah, I knew that. I watched Dominion. What did you think of that match? Um, it was, I actually thought it was fine. I know a lot of people didn't like it. They didn't, it was, it was slow, but it was very, like, a very Chris Jericho match. It wasn't, yeah, like, and- from my experience watching Okada, it wasn't like an Okada match. It was more like a Jericho match, if that makes any sense. Yeah, basically, you're basically right. It worked at Jericho's pace, or Jericho's style. Yeah, it was a little short. It wasn't what you expect from a New Japan main event because they're usually epic and colossal and so friggin' long. I didn't think it was bad, but, though. No, I, I liked it. I liked what happened afterwards, too, with the the, the altercation. Jericho beating him down. 
But then Jericho put something down his pants, and that got weird. Ah, oh, Jericho's a weird guy. That's true. He's a weird guy. So Okada last year was not... And this is crazy because he's been the IWGP champion a couple of times. And he always seems to have that belt around his waist. He was champion for two years at one point. Two years straight. But last year he wasn't the champion. Last year he had lost the belt to Kenny Omega at Dominion. So he had a bit of a weird feel to last year's tournament. He finished with 13 points. Second in his block. With losses to Bad Luck Fale and Jay White and a draw with Hiroshi Tanahashi. Not able to advance to the champion to the uh, the final despite a very strong showing. But he was real weird last year. He dyed his hair red. He was playing with balloons. He was doing all sorts of weird shit. This year I expect a more focused Rainmaker, his nickname, the Rainmaker. I expect, you know, great things from him. He's in a very tough block, as we'll get to. As we'll get to, a lot of tough competitors in there. But you know, he's got to be. He's probably one of the favorites right now, if not the favorite. All right, I'm. I'm on board. I'm on board. I'm here. I'm. I'm. I'm listening. Josh is ever present. I'm present. Next on the list, in a block. Zack Sabre Jr. Oh, I know him. I'm, I'm no slouch to him. So for those of you who are WWE fans and WWE fans alone, you may remember Zack Sabre Jr. from the Cruiserweight Classic. He had a strong showing. He ran to the semifinals of the Cruiserweight Classic. He ended up losing to, I think it was Grand Metalik. I believe. Yeah, it was Grand Metalik. Yeah, it was. Who is currently doing, like, nothing. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Back up! <laughs> He's in the Lucha House Party, and didn't they defeat Lars Sullivan at Super Showdown? I didn't watch that show, I but mean, I think they won. Technically, yes, they did. So, doing nothing, that's a bold statement. I, I stand by it. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the hook with Zack Sabre Jr. is he wrestles a very, very, very heavy submission-based style. Yeah. He very rarely goes for, like, moves. He just tries to tap you out. And some of the ways he taps people out are just absurd. He's got finishers called, like, the Ode to Jim Breaks, orient- Orienteering with Napalm Death. There's another one that the name of the finisher is, like, three lines long, and I can't remember it. Mm. But he has m- multiple, multiple ways to tap your ass out. And he's in a tough block. He's going to... You know, he was in the same block as not at, he was not in Okada's block. He was in B block last year. He finished with 12 points, which was good enough to tie for the lead. But because of head to head stuff, he was not, he was unable to win the block. He lost head to head to Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi. Okay. Now, okay. Now. With ZSJ, I have him this year making a run. Uh, and I have Okada making a run as well. I have Okada finishing at 12. I have Zack Sabre Jr. finishing at 10. Uh, multiple great matchups, including one with Kota Ibushi that is a rematch from last year's block, which was fucking outstanding. I recommend everyone go back and watch that match. Oka- or Zack Sabre Jr., Kota Ibushi from last year's block. It was only like the first or second night of B-block action. It was just stupendous. Stupendous. So good. Damn. So, yeah, so good. I cannot oversell it enough. It was just that damn good. So that's ZSJ. Oh, well, another fun thing about Z- Zack Sabre Jr. is that he comes out with, and you might, you'll probably know this name from the old WWF, uh, Taka Michinoku. Oh, of course. Taka. Remember a Kai and Tai? Oh, yeah. Uh, light heavyweight champion, I believe, at one time. 100% he was. Innovator of the Michinoku driver that a lot of people use today. A lot. He's it seems like everyone he's uses the Michinoku like, driver. <laughs> yeah, it does seem like everyone uses a nice Michinoku driver, and you have Taka to thank for that. Thank you, Taka um, Michinoku. He's Zack Sabre Jr.'s hype man. Oh. He'll come out, and he, before the he'll, he'll take the mic from the ring announcer... And do his own ring announcing, and it, it's half in Japanese, half in English, but it's pr- it's 
one hundred percent entertaining. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. I like that little tagline you threw in there. That's a good line. That is a and good Zach's line. Such a hockey arrogant son of a bitch. He's like hard. He, he's he's a heel, but he's so cool and he's so good at what he does that yeah, you, you, you kind of have to like him. He's one of the he's one of the foreigners, uh, also known as Gai Jin. And he yells the F word a lot when he wrestles. Ooh, my favorite. Which is what they can get away with in New Japan because half the audience doesn't know what he's saying. Ah. So if you ever watch those press conferences after the match or you ever really listen in during a match, you might hear you might hear them yelling, fuck, a lot. And Zack Sabre Jr. is one of the guys who loves to yell it. I love a good F-bomb. You know me. Yeah. I love a good F-bomb. Oh, I think they're terrific when used right, and I think Saber Jr. uses them well. There's only one person in this tournament that uses it better, and we're gonna get we're gonna get to him. But we'll move on. Next up on the block A list is the was the winner of last year's tournament, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Oh, I know often, Tanahashi. Off, off, wow, Tanahashi. 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 <laughs> Uh, Tanahashi is often compared to John Cena in that he's been there forever. He's been the face of the company for like over 10 years. He's really good. He's probably better. I mean, he's better comparable. He's better at New Japan than Cena is in WWE. Not to say Cena isn't good because Cena's a damn good wrestler. But Tanahashi's had more classics, I'd say. Okay. Uh, Including at Wrestle Kingdom 13, which I don't know if you watched, Josh. He had a match with Kenny Omega. No, I, that was I, I watched. Off the charts. It was very Stupendous. good. Stupendous. It's got my seal of approval. Well, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Tanahashi won last year's block with 15 points. He defeated Kota Ibushi in the final of last year's tournament. Defended his uh, his right to the title match against Kazuchika Okada and Jay White. Jay White and Jay White was I think the only clean loss he suffered in last year's tournament. And it wasn't even clean. It was very disqual it was a very, very uh interfe- not interference, but Jay White got dirty. We'll talk about Jay White later. But Jay White got dirty to beat Hiroshi Tanahashi. And that's just ain't cool. That's not very G one esque. Like I said, it's a very honor based tournament, very tradition based. And you don't look you don't look at outside interference and you don't look at cheating as something that's highly tolerable in this tournament. But that's the only way Tanahashi sustained a clean loss. And the only maybe the only way he could lose, because he is someone that puts up at least ten or twelve points in every, in the last six or seven G ones. Ten to twelve points is good enough to win you the block most years, and he's done it seven years in a row. Damn. He's got intrigue. Like his, he's facing Okada in Dallas on Saturday, and that's always a barn burner. They put on some of the best matches I've ever seen. He's also got good matches coming up with Zack Sabre Jr., Kota Ibushi, Will Ospreay, who's a bit of a wild card in this whole thing. <coughs> and one more superstar we'll talk probably more in depth about because you'll know more about the superstar later, the end of A block. But... Right up there, this block is so top heavy, and right up there with Okada, Zack Saber Jr., Kota, and Tana, Arohoshi Tanahashi almost gave it away. Is Kota Ibushi? Now again, if you're WWE centric and you really only watch WWE and you don't know who Kota Ibushi is, go back to the Cruiserweight Classic. He was the guy. He was the odds-on favorite to win. Made it to the semifinals. Lost to eventual winner T.J. Perkins. And he's best described as a free spirit. He only recently signed with New Japan. I know it feels like he's probably been there for a while, but he only recently signed a contract. I know who Kota Ibushi is. I've seen a lot of his stuff. Obviously, I knew first of him because of the Cruiserweight Classic. But yeah, I do know and I'm very familiar with him. I didn't know he only recently signed, though. Yeah, he only recently signed a full-length contract. Other than, before then, he was an independent contractor, technically. Oh. He worked with New Japan, he worked with New Japan but that, that's how he was able to work the Cruiserweight Classic and those couple of NXT matches he worked after that. 
And he also worked with DDT Pro Wrestling, which you've ever, which you, if you've ever heard of DDT, they take the absurdity of professional wrestling and ratchet it up to a thousand. Yeah, he's wrestled right. a bull doll. He's wrestled a child. Oh, nice. He's he's re- he's jumped off of vending machines. He's wrestled out in the woods. He's done a lot of weird shit. Damn. But now he's he's focused. He wants to be IWGP Heavyweight Champion. He wants to win the G1. He came so close last year. Finished with 12 points, won the B block, and then lost to Hiroshi Tanahashi in the final. A result that many people thought was shocking. A lot of people didn't expect Tanahashi to win last year, let alone me. I didn't expect him to win, let alone win the title at Wrestle Kingdom. I thought maybe he was too old for that, but clearly the dude could still go. And he had a great G1 last year. And Coda had a great G1 last year. Coda beat Kenny Omega. He beat Zack Sabre Jr. His only clean loss, I believe, was to... And this is going to be shocking. Ibushi lost to Sonata and Tamatanga and Toru Yano. Uh, Tamatanga not being in the, the tournament this year. Sonata and Yano we'll talk about in a bit. Let me clear my throat. But uh, Abushi, yeah, Abushi's his style is a mix of high flying aerial acrobatics and just punishing strikes. He will dent your, you will cave your chest in in a friggin' minute. He's that good. He's had some classics over the years. Uh, he had a, a Shinsuke Nakamura at Wrestle Kingdom nine. If you haven't seen that match, I go back and watch it. He had a great one. Uh, long live Shinsuke Nakamura. Not really sure what the deal is with him at mm. the moment. Yeah, it's a bit everywhere with uh, old Shin. I thought they were going with Shin and Finn, but that wasn't even on SmackDown. <laughs> yeah, that that was what two weeks ago or la- the week the week prior. Yeah, and they did that segment where it was like Shin and Finn, and that's a match that probably has happened in Japan, but I'm not aware of it, so I've never seen it. So I'd like to see it. Yeah. 100%. But, yeah, I don't know what they're doing, but Shinsuke Nakamura is a former winner of this tournament, uh, former IWGP heavyweight champion, really brought the IWGP Intercontinental Championship to prominence as well. Uh, one, of the, one of the all-time greats in New Japan for sure. But he's not in this tournament, so I don't know why we're wasting our goddamn time talking about a has-been like Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh, boy. Yeah. Now, I still love him though. I still I still want him to succeed. But this is okay. So those, that's the cream of the crop we just went through: Okada, Saber Junior, Tanahashi, and and Ibushi. Those are like the four favorites I'd say out of this block. I have Kota Ibushi winning the block at fourteen points. Next, now you're getting some of the mid tier guys, and I like the way I'm looking off my Brainbuster Radio G1 Climax 29 prediction sheet. Um, shout out to Brain Buster Radio. If you haven't signed up for the G1 Climax sheet yet, by the time you're hearing this, you'll have about 24 hours. So I suggest you get on it. It's a lot of fun. Even if you don't know the G1 at all, it's still a lot of fun to pick winners and stuff. I did it last year with no knowledge of New Japan whatsoever. And even though I finished like dead last, it was still a lot of fun. So Josh, if you haven't jumped in on that, I do recommend it. Even as someone who doesn't know the G1, doesn't know New Japan, it's still a lot of fun. You'll get to keep track, and it'll help you keep involved. All right. Fuck it. I wasn't going to do it because I'm like, I have no knowledge of this, but I'll do it. Good. That's two people I've sold in the last 24 hours. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> yes, I'm proud of myself. I want, I, want a lot of, I want as many competitors as possible so when I win... It's a big, it's a big feel that I beat. What's it gonna feel like if someone like me actually fucking wins this shit? <laughs> I will, I will not be surprised at all. Really? <laughs> yeah, I will not be surprised at all. I liken it to uh, March Madness in America, the NCAA National Basketball Tournament, college basketball, where everyone fills out a bracket, whether you know college basketball or not. Everyone fills it out. It's the thing to do. And oftentimes I've been beaten by people who I – I watch college basketball every night during the fall. I watch it literally every night. I can tell you so much about it, and I end up losing to people who have never watched a game in their life. And I don't even complain anymore because I know it's that random. This is that random. 
the G1. Oh, look at me. I'm going to I'm going to look at this prediction sheet right now. Damn. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, you can take take notes, take hints. I'm um, dropping some advice. Like I said, I have Coda finishing the block at 14. Next up is Evil. Yes, this guy's name is Evil. He is Evil. In all caps, too. You have to you have to capitalize the whole thing. Evil. So Evil is a member of the faction Los Ingobernables de Japón, which is led by Tetsuya Naito. Uh, that translates loosely to the, ungo- the Ungovernables of Japan. <coughs> they're, they're like the coolest stable. They're probably the most popular stable in Japan right now. Oh. Evil is someone who's beaten Kazuchika Okada before. He beat him two years ago in the G1. He's someone that could rip off a lot of points, or he could fall flat. He's a wild. He's a bit of a wild card in this tournament. I have him at four points. I have him beating Bad Luck Fale and Lance Archer, two guys we'll talk about in just a second. Uh, but there's not really too much to say about Evil. He's like a hybrid heavyweight where he's like he's not like the biggest guy, but he works like he's a big guy. Um, his finisher is an STO. Not the not. Not the most exciting, to be honest. Um, not great, but what are you gonna do? You can't have every cool finisher in the in New Japan professional wrestling. But yeah, I have Evil finishing at four points, la- not last in the block, but down near the bottom because I don't know what they're gonna do with him. Um, I think they're more focused on his fellow Lij stablemate Sonata, who we'll talk about next. More so than they're focused on him. I see him taking a lot of losses. Um, putting up good fights in those losses, sure. But I don't see him really making too much of an impact. So remember that when you're filling out your block. I am not high on evil. Okay. <coughs> I don't like evil. I am not a fan of evil. I am a fan of good. There's no wrestler named good, though. Mm, I don't... Mm, I would probably go for evil over good. But let's not go there. What's next? <laughs> No, okay, I hear you. Next up, fellow Los Ingo Bernabeles de Japón member, Sonata. Okay, so wait a minute, hold up for one second. These people that are in this faction, all of their names in capital letters? Evil, Sonata, and then another guy who's not in the tournament are in capital letters. Okay. Is there any reason to that? Or is it just, Uh, (laughs) you don't know? I have no clue. Okay. <laughs> I, w- I wish I could tell you different, but there's I have no idea. Move along. I love- <laughs> because everyone else has their names in Japanese subtitles, and then when they get to evil, it's just in big English block letters, evil. Nice. That's why. I, that's what I love about these guys. Right. Okay. Let's talk about Sonata then. <laughs> talk about Sonata. Sonata is interesting to me. He had a good G1 last year. He ended up finishing with. Let's see here. I'm still on the Wikipedia page. He finished last year with uh, eight points. Wins over... Wins over... Uh, Kota Ibushi. Big, uh, big, I was going to say Bigly. Wins over Kota Ibushi. Wins over... Who are these two competitors? Tamatanga and Toru Yano. And, uh, and Zack Sabre. Those are two big wins. He, had, he beat Zack Sabre Jr. He beat Kota Ibushi, two of the favorites in this year's tournament. So he's a guy you can't take lightly. However, I'm taking him lightly. Because I don't really think I'm too big a fan of this guy. He's kind of he's, – he's very athletic. And he's very – he can do the high flying. He can do the – you know, his finisher is like a dragon sleeper. Let's call it a skull end. I'm just not enthused by this guy, though, Josh. Something about him, he, his demeanor. He's so cool and calm in the ring, he's almost boring. Damn. <coughs> you were like, firing that's, some that's the, shots today. That's the. I'm firing all the shots. I have all the smoke because I'm talking out of my ass. Is this because you have, like, you got your big boy pants on because you're like, look at me. I'm the smart one. I'm hosting yeah. the show for the week. I'm taking I'm taking control. This is Kevin's show this week. It's the Kevin show this week. 
yeah, basically, I'm taking my my chance to just fire off as many shots as possible. I hope all these guys are listening. I hope Sonata's listening. He's like, damn, maybe I should set my game up because this kid from Wrestling Rebo doesn't think I have what it takes. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. I just said, yeah, I said that. A lot of people love Sonata. A lot of people think he might win the block. I don't. I have him finishing at six. Six points, which is down near the bottom for me. I just don't see it. I don't see it. Fair, fair call. So those are your lot. Those are your Lij stable guys for A block. There's another guy in B block. We'll get to the leader of the stable, in fact. But next up on this list, A block, a guy that I could literally just a guy that if he wasn't in the tournament, I wouldn't mind. Bad luck, Fale. So Bad Luck Fale is a member of the Bullet Club, which is probably the most famous faction. Not necessarily the most popular right now, but the most famous faction in New Japan. Because they're typically foreigners to they're not there's like no Japanese members except one. They're all for they're all foreigners, they're all bad guys, and no one personifies bad guy like Bad Luck Fale. He's just this huge dude. Can't really wrestle, but I guess that that's like how you work heel in 2019 is you're not a good wrestler. People will hate you for it. You know, he's your typical big man. Can't really move well. Uh, his finisher is like a a crucifix bomb. So to sp- sort of. Um, I, f- I forget what the hell. It- There's a name for it. The Razor's Edge. Razor Ramon's finisher. Right. That's what he uses, and he sucks. I hate him. I hate him to death. He probably hates me. That's fine. But when I was ranking matches for last year's tournament, and I was ranking them by night because, yeah, you have five matches a night. Night one will be block A. Night two will be block B. Three will be A, and it goes back and forth like that. (coughs) Every single night for the A block, because he was in A block last year as well, his match was the worst of the night because he had so much outside interference from Bullet Club, from Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, a.k.a. the Gorillas of Destiny, that it just made me sick. Like, he just – he didn't even care about the tournament. He didn't care about getting points. He didn't care about winning the, winning the whole damn thing and winning the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. He cared about making a statement with his Bullet Club brethren, and I just – ah, it made me so mad. It made me so mad because that was my first G1, and I was all geared up for it to be about honor and respect. And, you know, no outside interference, and I got a whole shit ton of it. And that made me mad. Damn. That made me mad. But Fale is someone who does rack up points in G1s, though. Uh, Not counting last year, where I believe he finished with, like, six. He finishes double digits most every year because he's just so big and hard to beat. You know, he takes he takes a lot of everybody's power game away. Uh, the way to beat him is with speed. The way to beat him is with, you know, t- uh, tactics, strategy. You got to be you got to stick and move. That's that's how you that's a blueprint for anyone listening on how to be bad luck fall. If you try to match him strength with strength, he will kick your ass. That said, I have him finishing at eight points right in the middle of the block, beating guys like Hiroshi Tanahashi, Sonata, Lance Archer, and Kenta, who is interesting to me. <laughs> and there's an, obvious, there's an obvious reason why he's interesting to me. But we'll, get, we'll touch on that in a minute. Because next up on the list, someone that I don't know, really know anything about, <laughs> just gloss over this guy a little bit, Lance Archer. Lance Archer is also in a faction. This faction is called Suzuki Goon. And they're another heel faction. They just beat the shit out of everybody. This guy is just going to beat the shit out of everybody. But he's not going to win anything. He's going to beat the shit out of you and then he's going to lose. Because he's, he's a bit player in this whole thing. He's probably the least likely to win out of all 20 competitors. Um... I can't see him beating really anybody. I have him beating Hiroshi Tanahashi. That's it. Which is a big win for him. Like, I don't know why I picked that. I'm feeling a little dangerous. You know, I'm feeling a little, uh, 
little bold, a little braggadocious. And I, and I went ahead and picked Archer over Tanahashi. That's what makes these pick'ems fun, is you have to pick, like, random weird shit sometimes in order to make your, your points work. Because no one really finishes with zero points. So you have to pick, like, where is this guy going to finish? I have Archer at two. He just lost his tag team partner. Remember Davey Boy Smith Jr., D.H. Smith, from yeah. uh, the, the Hart Dynasty? Of course. When he left WWE, he, he formed a team with this guy, with Lance Archer, called the Killer Elite Squad. And they are multiple-time IWGP ta- heavyweight tag team champions. So he's got the resume. He's got the pedigree. He's got the championships. He's never won a singles championship in Japan, though. I'm honestly not sure if he's ever competed for one. And that doesn't that buck doesn't start now. I have him finishing at two points, beating Hiroshi Tanahashi. And that is that for Lance Archer. I believe he'll put on good matches with some guys. Him and Fale is a good matchup because they're both huge dudes. Uh, Archer and Osprey should be good because of the clash of styles. And Osprey has a good match with just about everybody. And speaking of Will Osprey, he's next on the list. Now, Will Osprey is an interesting guy in this field because he's a junior heavyweight. In New Japan, there are two designations for wrestlers. There's junior heavyweights and there are heavyweights. This is a heavyweight tournament. Will Ospreay is the IWGP junior heavyweight champion. This, to my knowledge, is the first time a declared junior is competing in the heavyweight G1 Climax. Now, I know, who a... Will, I know who Will Ospreay is. I'm very, 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 very familiar with him. He's yeah, great. he's famous outside of Japan, yeah. um, in England, and even stateside. He's a bit of a moron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't follow him on Twitter. Yeah, he's, um, I follow, no, I f- keep up more of him on his Instagram stories. He has some interesting stuff. I mean, I don't hate, to be honest, because he's just being a big goober. But, um, yeah, uh, but I'm very <laughs> familiar with him in the ring. He's obviously does a lot of cool shit. I think the first time I seen him, pr- maybe when a lot of other people seen him, um, at least, like, from my point of view, was him and Ricochet. Yeah, that, that was my introduction to Will Ospreay. That, that, that was back in, I think, 2016. Yeah. Uh, Ricochet, now in WWE, formerly of New Japan, and Will Ospreay had a match in the Best of the Super Juniors tournament, which is basically the G1 for junior heavyweights. It's the yeah. same style, same, same exact thing, basically. Uh, they had a match that set the wrestling world ablaze. Um, whether you loved it, as I did, or you hated it, like Vader, like Vader did. May he rest in peace. Vader hated it so much that he challenged Osprey to a match. It actually went over on Osprey, which I think is funny. In the year 2016, just good shit. Good shit. Now Osprey in this tournament is a wild card. He's one of like seven, there's like six or seven wild cards in this tournament. And Osprey is probably the wildest of the cards because you don't know whether or not he might just be there to take losses and to wrestle against heavyweights and gain experience, or he might be there to put the heavyweight division on notice. He could finish with 12 points. He could finish with two points. He really could do anything. I know our friend, uh, your friend and mine, Wilf, of the ever-popular Off the Script new show debuting, debuted this week on Brain Buster Radio Monday afternoon, so you can catch that. He thinks Will Ospreay is going to take a lot of losses. I have Will Ospreay finishing it damn near the top of the block at 12 points. I have him beating Zack Sabre Jr. I have him beating Sonata. I have him beating Kenta. I have him winning some big matches here. And I have him finishing at 12, a tie for second place. Not good enough to advance, but good enough to let the whole world know that Will Ospreay is going to be a heavyweight wrestler. He has wrestled heavyweight. He wrestled in the New Japan Cup, which is a single elimination tournament held in March. Um, Single elimination, basically. It's 24 guys. Last man standing wins. He went to the semifinals of that tournament. No, the quarterfinals. And he faced uh, Kazuchika Okada. And lost, but he's wrestled heavyweight. <laughs> he's a former never open weight champion. Now that belt is for anybody, junior or heavyweight, but it's typically held by heavyweights. 
uh, Osprey being the first junior in my knowledge to hold it. And he's done a lot. He's, he's accomplished a lot. He's a two-time Best of the Super Junior winner, a four-time IWGP Heavyweight Champion. He's really damn good at what he does. It just remains to be seen if that translates to the heavyweight level. So I have him at 12. We'll see, though. That could fluctuate. Um, got some big matches, though. Osp- Osprey and Ibushi it was really great at Wrestle Kingdom. I'm sure it'll be great again this time. Osprey Kenta intrigues the hell out of me. And so does Osprey Okada, which we've seen before. But should be great this time around, too. And last on the Block A list, mentioned his name a couple times. My, I think the most interesting competitor in this whole tournament, Kenta. Formerly known as what, Josh? Hideo Itami. Yes. For those of you who watched NXT in the, past, in the last five years... You might remember Hideo Itami as being one of the first major signings they brought in. When I think of NXT in the the early days, I think of of Kenta slash Hideo Itami. I think of Finn Balor, and I think of Sami Zayn and uh, Neville. Those are the four guys I think were like the pillars of NXT in the very beginning. I I, I don't agree. I don't agree. You don't? You don't agree. If I was to pick four guys that I remember from like the early days of NXT, it'd be Neville. Feed Neville. Yeah. Neville was the first one. Bo Dallas. I would think Bo Dallas because he was like he was the first NXT champion. Yeah, he was. I would think Tyson. He wasn't Kidd. the first, but he was NXT champion. I'd think Tyson Kidd because he was like the first one to like get like a reignited push. Like, he was from, like, the main roster, and he come down, and he was, like, like that... He was going for the NXT title. Didn't he work with Neville, and he was in, like, a fatal four-way? Yeah, and I already know who your fourth guy is going to be, but go ahead and say it. No, who, who do you think it is? Is it Tyler Breeze? Yeah, it's Tyler Breeze. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they had a, there was a fatal four-way between those... Not those four dudes. Sami Zayn was involved uh, instead of Bo Dallas. But, yeah, those guys all worked together well. I was thinking like international signings more so than like homegrown talent. Okay. But fair. Tyler Breeze. But when you want to do straight up four pillars, Tyler Breeze has to be in there. Um, I'd probably keep out Dallas, but I'd keep Breeze. I'd keep Neville. Tyson Kidd is a good one. But those, those are the and those are the guys you, that like when NXT first got hot. That's who you thought of. Okay, fair. I, yeah, that, fair. <laughs> I agree Balor. Balor and Atami came a little bit later. Yeah, Balor was like the second group for me. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, we digress. I mean, we need to get into Block B soon, so... We're on the last competitor in Block A, Kenta, and I have no clue what to expect from him in this tournament. He's... I don't think he's ever wrestled a lot of these guys. I could be wrong, but like you, because he didn't work in New Japan when he was in Japan. He worked for another company called Pro Wrestling Noah. So I don't believe he's he's matched up with a lot of these guys, and it should be intriguing to see him match up with the likes of Osprey and Okada and Abushi and Tanahashi, and all the good, all the really good competitors in this block. I have Kenta finishing at ten points, wins over Tanahashi, wins over Kota Abushi. And then the scrubs. <laughs> but uh, he's another one that I don't know exactly how he's going to fare. He just debuted last month. Just debuted last month. Block B. We're moving on. Block A is like the star-studded block. Block B is the heavy-hitting block. There are a lot of guys in here that just punch you in the mouth and make you feel like a big bag of dookie. And first up on that list, I was waiting for a, I was waiting for a laugh because I didn't get it. Tough crowd. I was, I'm no, just move on. <laughs> just move on. Yeah, first up on the list, the leader of Los Ingo Bernables de Japón, Tetsuya Naito. Definitely one of the biggest movers and shakers in New Japan. One of the biggest names. He wrestled Kota Ibushi at Dominion. In a match that was so violent that people actually were turned away from it. 
which is really hard to say because New Japan is pretty violent based wrestling. Like there's a lot of heavy strikes and a lot of dangerous neck spots. And this match literally made people say this is enough. And that's crazy. Uh, you watched that match, I gather, right? Yes. Did you have that opinion where it was like, ah, too much? Mm, I mean, yes to a certain degree. The next spot on the apron was like too much. I, I will agree with that. When uh, he got ger- oh, Abushi got Germaned on the apron and his neck got twisted. Oh. That was scary. Yeah, ow. Big ouch, big ouch. Turn my light on. But Naito is a two-time G1 winner. I should I should mention that Okada is a two-time winner, and Tanahashi is a three-time winner. Tetsuya Naito is the only uh, no. There's one other person who's won the G1, but Naito won in 2013. And what he's most famous for for that run was that uh, oh the Yankees just hit a home run. But he's most famous for for that run is that. When Naito won the G1 in 2013, he's the only he's the only G1 winner, to my knowledge, not to main event Wrestle Kingdom. The IWGP Heavyweight Championship did not main event Wrestle Kingdom that year, because the Intercontinental Championship, as voted on by fans, it wasn't the company's decision; it was a fan vote. The fans voted the Intercontinental Championship match between Tanahashi and Nakamura to be the main event over Naito and Okada. Now, Naito is a much different wrestler back then. Now he's bitter, and he's, he's, a, he's more of a heel, but fans love him. I love Naito. He's probably my favorite wrestler in New Japan because he has this whole air of, you know, he, he calls himself Tranquilo, which I don't know what it translates to necessarily in English, but he's so calm and so cool in the ring. At least, you know, he walks out to the ring in a full suit, he takes his time getting it off. He lays down in the ring a lot. He spits in your face. He's he's always he always seems to have like a like a like a shit eating grin on his face. But when that bell rings, he's one of the fastest competitors in the company. He's so lightning quick that he's so much fun to watch. He's gonna have great matches with a lot of guys in this block. I have him winning the block at 14 points, facing Kota Ibushi in the final, where I have Ibushi winning. But I think Naito is going to pick up a lot of wins. I only have Naito losing two matches to two competitors that we're going to talk about next. So I won't spoil. But yeah, Naito, definitely a the B-Block favorite at this point, him and Jay White. Uh, I expect Naito to do great things. I expect him to be a world champion sooner rather than later. He was world champ back in 2016 for a cup of coffee. Um, he recently main evented WrestleMania, Wrestle Kingdom 12 when he won the G1 in 2017. He main evented against Okada and lost for the IWGP Championship. So this will be a good chance for him to get back to the top. Um, he's been sort of lacking the last couple of months to a year. Hasn't been really doing it. But I think he's going to step his game up. I think he could very well win the G1 this year. Next up, another one of my favorites. Tomohiro Ishii, otherwise known as the Stone Pitbull. Now, if that's not an intimidating nickname, then you might be deaf. You probably aren't hearing what I'm saying because the dude is called the Stone Pitbull because he's literally made of stone. He is the hardest hittingest, roughest, rootin' tootin' superstar in this whole tournament. He will make you bleed from your mouth. He will make you spinning. He will have you spinning dizzy from headbutts. He will take your best shots, smile at you, ask for more, and then dish it back ten times as hard. It's friggin' crazy what this guy's able to do. He takes spots on He's got no neck, so he could take really dangerous spots and almost be in no danger. He's literally got, like, no neck. Damn. And he's somebody that... He's never won, he's never held the Intercontinental or the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. He's never won the G1. He's had some good he's had some good showings, but he's never won it. I don't think he'll ever win it, to be frank. I think they see him as a mid carder, but he always rattles off some impressive wins in this tournament. And I think he's gonna do that. I think he's gonna beat Tetsuya Naito. I think he's gonna beat Jeff Cobb is another relatively impressive win. 
But other than that, I, I, he's gonna he's gonna take losses. He's gonna take losses to the new competitors who we'll talk about. He's gonna take losses to some old heads. Um, but he's he's one of the most fun guys to watch, and he's part of the match that I'm looking forward to most out of this whole entire tournament. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Next up on the list, another guy you may remember. Do you remember C.J. Parker from NXT? Of course I remember C.J. Parker. He was cleansing like the, the mo- world. Yeah, the moonchild, eco-warrior type of guy. So he, after he left NXT, I believe his last televised match was against Kevin Owens. Uh, in Kevin Owens' debut, actually. Um, he went to New Japan. And now he goes by the name Juice Robinson. Juice Robinson is currently... Yankees just hit another home run. Let's friggin' go. Uh, what was that? Juice Robinson. Juice Robinson is the current IWGP United States champion. A belt held by the likes of Kenny Omega, Jay White, Cody Rhodes, and many more. Very prestigious belt. He's the current champion in his second reign. Actually, no, he's not. I was going to say, isn't John I, Moxley the champion? Oh, my God. You dumb dumb. Oh, my God. He's the dumb dumb now. It, Even I knew that. John Moxley is the United States champion. Juice just dropped the belt at Dominion. I don't even at Dominion. It was at the best of the Super Juniors final. God. Wow. Jo- this is the Josh show now. He will be taking over for the rest of Block B. I'll be resting on my ass. <laughs> yeah, I knew Juice Robinson. I knew lost to John Moxley. Me and him share initials, so... We yes, Juice Robinson, jo- Juice Robinson, Josh Robinson. Clear, clear, clearly, both real names. <laughs> who, do, who doesn't name their first child Juice? Well, I mean... I might name my Juice, Juice Carroll. <laughs> anyway, anyway we've been, we, you've really been have talking for like an hour, Kevin. We better, uh, we, better, we better rapid fire some of these Block B people. <laughs> All right, I could do that because Block B is not as star-studded. There's a lot of guys I don't know much about. So, boom, Juice Robinson finishes at eight points, beats Tetsuya Naito. Uh, that's his big win. He beats John Moxley. That's another big win for him. Uh, his in-ring style is, like, very WWE-esque mm. still. Um, he's I don't like Juice. I know our friend JPQ also doesn't like Juice. Oh, yes. So that's- Shout out to JPQ. That we I know one thing about JPQ. It's that... He ain't a fan of Juice Robinson. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with him, honestly. To play devil's advocate here, I'll just be a big fan. I mean, we share okay, last yeah, names, so... Yeah, you and Josh, you're, you and Juice, you and Josh. I am you and Josh. Juice, you and Josh could be, uh... You, Jesus, I keep saying it. Now you got that shit in my head. Now Juice can be your best friend. Hey, and... it would just be like me, Juice, and Luke. Omega Luke's got the same last name, so we'll just we'll just be the Robinsons. Former stable. Meet the Robinsons. Oh, bully. <laughs> movie I've never seen. A uh, movie I've <laughs> never seen, and I got that joke so many times, I'm like, I have no fucking yeah. idea what oh, you're bet. talking about. I bet. <laughs> next up, next up, the comedy wrestler. The sublime master thief, Toru Yano. This is the dude that got counted out in last year's tournament because he got duct taped to the fence. This uh, is wait, the guy. Uh, wait, uh, rewind. Uh, what? <laughs> okay, so last year, he's the guy that's known for pulling out the duct tape. Two years ago, he duct taped Kenny Omega's hands, and Kenny Omega had to wrestle the entire match without his hands, oh. which was which was pretty awesome, and he still won the match. Of course. But... Yano is just the guy. Yeah, last year he was facing Sonata, and so he pulled out the tape. Sonata took it from him and tied him, really tied him up against the uh, fence, and um, and he couldn't break free and got counted out. Huh. It was like a four minute match. It was absolutely brilliant. I recommend watching that too. If you like, no, no collaboration required. I'm just gonna visualize that. <laughs> But Yano's not someone who racks up points. Even though I have him winning a lot of matches, I just realized he's not someone who wins a lot of po- wins a lot of points. Typically, I have him hot on the higher end with eight. I have him beating that goddamn Jay White. 
hate it, hate that guy. Oh. We'll get there. But next up, after Toriano, we've got another hard hitter, another guy in the Tomohiro Ishii vein, another former G1 winner back in 2008. That's 11 years ago, if you could believe it. This guy's competing in probably his 12th or 13th G1. Is Hiroki Goto, former Never Openweight champion, uh, I think three or four times, former, like I said, G1 winner. Never held, he's had like six opportunities at the IWGP heavyweight belt, never won it. Uh, he's somebody that I know Wilf has carded him as a wild card. Wilf's got him finishing third in the block. I don't. I have him finishing second to last in the block. I have him beating Tomohiro Ishii, Toru Yano, and I have him beating John Moxley. Uh, Moxley is someone I just don't know about. We'll talk about him in a little bit. But there's not much to say about Goto. He beats you up. Uh, his, part, his match with Tomohiro Ishii is the match I'm looking forward to most out of this whole G1. I will say that easily. But next up is that damn Jay White. I don't even want to talk about Jay White. Do you want to talk about Jay White? It's Jay White from New Zealand. Yeah. Okay, well... We don't need to spend too much time on old New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand is our neighbors. We don't like them very much. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. Jay Shout White. out to everyone in New Zealand. But, I mean, everyone knows that New Zealand is just a poor man's Australia. Yeah, Jay White is a bitch. Um, he cheated to win a lot of matches last year. That makes me angry. But he did beat Okada and Tanahashi in last year's tournament. He's beaten Okada twice, and he beat Tanahashi for the world championship. Oh. This dude is this dude has clearly got a lot of wins. You don't just beat those guys, and you know. Well, yeah. Not. I, I mean, yeah. All I know, and all I really know about Jay White is that girls love him. Shout out to the Switch Babe if she's listening. Yeah. Girls do love him. Girls love Jay White. Yeah, and guys love Jay White too. I mean, he's very popular. Right on. I just hate him. I don't think he's that interesting in the ring. I'm going to catch a lot of shit for this, and I'm prepared for it. I just don't think he's interesting. I I'll think he's bland. It. I have no knowledge of him, really. I've seen him, but I don't really, can't really recall ever watching one of his matches. So I'll co-sign it for you there, Kevin. Thank you. It's nice to have backup. I, I, think, the, I think the rest of the Brain Buster crew likes him, so oh, I'll shit. probably... Have to Maybe I'll take that signature off. <laughs> no, nah, too I'm late. You signed it. to the wolves. <laughs> the ink is dry. But Jay White wrestles a very – he's he's probably going to cheat to win some of his matches, but he's also really good at wrestling. Oh, yeah. I love a good cheat. I love I love, <laughs> when, I love a good heel, so I don't give a fuck. See, I don't like cheating in this tournament, though. Mm. I say, You know what? Angry. See, I am a very um, WWE um, – well, no, I wouldn't even – I'm a very – hmm, what's the word? Entertainment-based wrestling fan, so – I say fuck tradition. Cheat. Let's do some count right. outs in here. Fuck tradition, truck tradition. <laughs> well, spoonerism for you. Uh, I'm dropping heat daily on Wrestling Reverb. Is that a home run too? <laughs> oh! Dude just robbed the home run. I'm also watching the Yankees game for those listening in. Can't Huge relate. moment right there. I ha- I- jo- Wait, Yankees uh, baseball. Yes, the Yankees are baseball. That's as much knowledge you'll get. I have zero... I know kind of how to play. I, okay, the most... The closest thing I've ever got to playing or watching baseball is playing baseball in Wii Sports. Okay, well, so you know the basic rules then. I know That's the basic Wii rules, yeah. We, I, Wii Sports baseball is the awesome, basic by the Basic rules? <laughs> yeah. Base. Yeah, basically just real easy shit to play. Great game. My second favorite Wii Sports game because tennis will always be the GOAT. Oh, tennis. Bowling was always my fun. My... I like golf. bowling. I'm like, for some reason, not very good at it. I'm not very good at golf. Oh, God. And I, and I, and I never played the boxing one. The boxing sucked. Let's be honest. The boxing yeah. wasn't great. I, I'm really just here for the Wii Sports music. Really? We we music in general just my gold. It's it's good shit, pal. It is good. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, Jay White. I have him finishing at twelve points, second place, just behind Knight. So I have him picking up wins over Tomohiro Ishii, Juice Robinson, 
Uh, Shingo Takagi, who we'll talk about. But next up is Jeff Cobb. Jeff Cobb, you may know from Ring of Honor, or if you watch Lucha Underground at all, he was the monster Matanza Cueto. Mm -hmm. I was was on the Lucha Underground train for a hot minute. Yeah, right? I mean, so was I. I've watched the whole first season, that's it. Yeah, I think I only watched the first season. I don't believe I watched the second, but hey, I may have. Good shit, though. Um, rest in peace, Lucha Underground, if it's not coming back. But yeah, Jeff Cobb's a big guy. Finished with the Tour of the Islands, uh, which is like a power slam, but he's, it's like a swinging power slam. It's pretty cool. Uh, I don't have... I have Cobb finishing at eight points. I don't know where he fits into this tournament exactly. I do have him picking up wins over Hiroki Goto, John Moxley, and some others. But I don't know how where he fits in this tournament. It's his first G1. I don't know what they're going to do with him because he's not a contracted New Japan wrestler. So you probably think he can't win too many matches, right? Well, I mean, you would think so. You would think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't pitch me. Anywho, on to the next... Com- oh, you know, I said I hate Jay White, but I have respect for Jay White in the ring because he's actually really good. This next guy, Tai Chi, he could pound sand. He can go play in traffic for all I care. Damn. I have him Fine. I have him at four points. I have him beating Juice Robinson and Hiroki Goto, and that's all I'm going to say about Tai Chi. He carries a mic stand to the ring. He sometimes wrestles in pants, sometimes wrestles in shorts. Um, it's confusing. Doesn't sound I very consistent to me. No. I don't think he's good at wrestling. I don't like him. He did have a great match at Dominion, but that's about it. I hit a great match with Ishii. But fuck him. Basically. <laughs> Next up, a, another first-time entrant. Uh, we round out Block B. Rock, Rock, Block B's got four first-time entrants. Here's the third one. Shingo Takagi, another member of the Los Ingobernables de Japón stable. Now, Shingo just competed in the Best of the Super Juniors tournament last month. He competed alongside Will Ospreay. They were actually the final of the whole tournament, which Will Ospreay won. But Shingo ran undefeated in his block, which is in- in- exceedingly tough to do. Imagine if Shingo goes 9-0 and in this block. That would be, against some of these names, would be the craziest thing. He's not going to, but it's crazy to imagine. Isn't it, Josh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like throwing you and catching you off guard. It's fun. This whole episode, but, uh, I'm off guard. I'm just like, uh-huh. <laughs> Agreed. But, well, you'll have, you'll have something to talk about with the next guy, but uh, Shingo, I have him finishing at eight. I have four competitors finishing at eight in this block. It's going to be that tight. Uh, I have him beating Tomohiro Ishii, Juice Robinson, Hiroki Goto, and, and Taichi. It remains to be seen, though, because he is a junior, and we don't know what, what to expect. And last last but not least on this list, to round out Block B, another guy who we just don't know what to expect, whether it be in the ring or on the board, John Moxley. FKA Dean Ambrose. I know you know him. Uh, yeah, I know one John Moxley. Um, let's let's uh, go for a little uh, here for a minute. Fighter Fest happened this past weekend, um, and he had a uh, quite the uh, quite the quite the reintroduction to hardcoreness, I guess. Um, with one Joey Janela, it was quite the barn burner. Yeah, it was. It was something. It was something else, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let me, let me tell you, they they. They pulled out all the toys, all the stops. It was really great. It was a great main event. Yeah, it was fun. But uh, John Moxley, all I know about John Moxley in this tournament, in this G1, is that from no matter where I see on the internet, no matter who's mentioned it to me, is that he is the ultimate wild card of all of this because no one really knows what to expect out of him, which I yes. would, I would, I would co-sign the hell out of because when do you really know what's going to happen with Mr. Moxley. 
I agree because he's the most unpredictable wrestler like on the planet. And he's got to deal with AEW, so that plays into the, the semantics behind it all. Like, are they going to give him wins? He can finish. He's not a guy. He can finish with 12. He can finish with two. I have him at 10. And he can only wrestle in the, like, not on state. Like, he's not wrestling in Dallas, is he? No, he's not wrestling in Dallas. Luckily, right. Dallas is a block A night, so he's not forfeiting a match. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. My mistake. Right, I haven't beaten the likes of Tomohiro Ishii, haven't beaten Jay White, haven't beaten Shingo Takagi. I have him racking up 10 points, finishing tied for third with Tomohiro Ishii. Uh, I think he's going to do really well. I think his style that he's he's been better. His he's only had two New Japan matches, and you could tell just how different he's wrestling. And he's having fun, which is more than you could probably say for him with WWE. He's having a lot of fun. Damn, yeah, he is. He's in a different zone at the moment. Um, that's for sure. But it's um, cool to see him doing something like this. Yeah, right? It is. It's, this is the best tournament in the world, man. It's cool to see him put his fingerprints on it. It's cool to see a lot of these first-timers like Osprey and Kenta and, you know, guys like Jeff Cobb, guys like Shingo Takagi. It's cool to see these first-timers get their licks in. Like they make it more interesting than just the same old people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway... So that wraps up at block A, block B. My picks, like I mentioned, are Abushi at a block A, uh, Naito at a block B, with Abushi beating Naito in another classic. I believe I have it pegged at like 37 minutes. Should but, uh, I? Should I... Oh, go on, sorry. 33 minutes I have it pegged at. Hell. What were you going to say? Should I dare to take a stab at this? Yes. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm just going to give you some really uninformed picks here. That's and fine. I want to see them. When I see, when I say, well, I would just say who I think will win block A and block B. Um, people are going to like cringe at this. Let me see. I think the winner of block. Okay. Winner of block A, I'm going to say is Will Ospreay. Damn. Hot block, take. Block, block B. Hmm. I'm going to say block B is won by... Um, let's see. I'm going to say block B is won by... Oh, I've got two... two uh, which one do I go with? Naito. I'm going to say, yeah. I'm going to, yep. I'm just going to go with that. That's intriguing to me. We've never seen that matchup. That would be a great match. They're both so quick. Everyone's probably going to cringe at what I just said because I have no fucking idea. But I'm just going to go with it and I'm going to stick to it. It just makes me want to see your picks even more. Like it just makes me want to see your thought process because it's not a bad. That's not a bad pick. You could have picked like Lance Archer and Tai Chi. That's that's a bad pick. No, I'm not like completely stupid on it, but I certainly don't know the process of these kind of tournaments or anything like that. But um, I know that people listening to this that are fans of this are probably going to go, ooh. Yeah, probably. You could deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> Because I don't know anything and I have no knowledge on it, it won't phase me. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to stick with this. If that happens, yeah. people owe me. People owe me. I'm a fucking psychic or some shit. Yeah, I'll give you... I'll, I'll Venmo you like $5 if right. you get it right. I'll take it, honestly. <laughs> but anyway, before we wrap up, I do have some questions to take from some fans. Um, first up, from our good friend Mags, Darren Kirkby... He wants to know who's the dar- who's going to be the dark horse of the G1 this year. My dark horse is Will Ospreay. Again, what? I have him finishing tied for second. I think he's going to win a lot of matches. I don't know if he's going to win necessarily, but that would be a big statement. I think he's going to win a lot of matches. I, I think he's going to disrupt the A block quite considerably. Uh, uh, do you want me to t- venture to take a guess here? Yeah, just pick a name. Jay White. 
Jay White is the wild card. Interesting. He's kind of like the... He pops up every now and again. I'm familiar enough with his name and know that he he does win quite often. <laughs> yep. He's one of the favorites to win the block. Well, there you go. There you go. Uh, Mags also had a question for you, Josh, just because he's like he says, since you know nothing next to nothing about NJPW, who's your favorite Money in the Bank winner? Oh, it's Edge. OG. Yeah, I, I, resp- I respect that. I'd probably agree. Yeah, it's Edge. He is Money in the Bank to me. Uh, Conrad asked the same question. Who's your wild card pick for the G1? Um, Zachary Shiloh, a big Brain Buster fan, asks, well, first he says, Hey, Kevin, Josh, you usually tend to be a WWE-centric show. Great minor pace change. What convinced you to do a G1 show? Well, it's G1 week, and I really just, I really wanted to be a part of that. Uh, it's, it's that simple. Yeah, if I, if I was solo on this show, I don't think I'd probably do it, only because I wouldn't have any knowledge and wouldn't be able to really fill any time talking about it. But, um, hey, Kevin's on this show as well. So I was like, well, we're going to participate. We're not going to be bad sports here at all. And it exercises a different part of my wrestling brain. And Kevin's, obviously. Yeah, I'm learning a lot just by doing this. Anyway, that yeah. So I think that I just wanted to do it. I just wanted to stretch my yeah. I wanted to stretch my brain, get get a little exercise for the noggin. All right. Next up, we've got from the MG Experience, another Brain Buster fan. Well, which is the better block, A or B? That depends on what kind of wrestling. If you like the star-studded, you know, Okada, Saber Junior, Tanahashi, Kota Ibushi, Will Ospreay, Kenta. You like that star-studded wrestling, block A is your choice. But if you like the hard-hitting, the nitty-gritty, you're going to go with block B. I personally love the nitty-gritty. I think block B is going to be a whole lot of fun. I think a lot of people would disagree with me, but I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun, especially with Mox in there, with Ishii and Goto in there, just a lot of Jeff Cobb, just a lot of, a lot of big dudes that just throw hands. XGW hashtag WWE 2K20 at XGW Fed asks the best matchups for the G1 card for both blocks. I sort of already answered this on a pot on Mags's podcast when we did that we did that Mount Rushmore that'll be out uh, that was out yesterday. In fact, we're recording this on Wednesday, but the show will be out on Friday. So yeah, you'll be you'll have already listened in. I went with four, I had four. I'll, I'll pick two here. Block A, Okada, Tanahashi. You can't beat those two. They're magic in the ring. With a, a, a secondary nod going to Kota Ibushi and Sabre Jr. Because I love those two together. I thought they had a fabulous match last year. And then Block B, there's only one. It's Ishii and Goto for me. I, I, could, I could honestly die happy watching that match and that match alone. Josh, you care to venture any guesses? No. <laughs> no? Fair I, enough. I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to even make a guess. Um let me let me So I can just pick any two of these people? Yep. Okay, well if I was going in my land, if I wanted something cool, it'd be Zack Sabre Jr. and Will Ospreay. Which you will see. And from block B I'd like to see. I'd like to see Jay White and John Moxley. I knew Moxley was going to be in there. Jay White and John Moxley should be a fun match. I have John Moxley winning that one. I have, I have Okada beat. No, I have Tanahashi beating Okada. So we'll see. I got one last question here from Devin Forrest. Who do you think Yano will beat this year? I have him beating Moxley and White. I have Yano beating. White, Cobb, Tai Chi, and Shingo Takagi. Um, I have him winning a lot of matches. I, I'm, so, I, I have no idea. <laughs> you, haven't gotten, you haven't gotten there yet, but you will. I'm holding you to it. You have to fill it out now. I will fill it out. But we'll see. <laughs> 
see how fucking well it works. <laughs> I can't wait for everyone to see. I can't wait for like the the, the new Japan guys it's like Wilf and Luke and JP Hughes and and Mags to see it and Queen. Oh boy. Because like I I won't think it's ridiculous no matter what. Because like I only have a layman's knowledge of this shit too. We yeah. This has certainly been the G one for dummies. <laughs> yes. We'll have to do more for dummy segments. They're fun. I like to be. I like to be smart. And I'm just doing me, being dumb. Being That's all you dumb. can do. Hey, next week I won't be a big dumb dumb. I'm sure we'll have something that I'm not so stupid at. But hey, I got to learn some shit today, so I'm not mad at all. Um, I didn't what? really chime in heaps, but I just let kind of Kevin do the. Do the uh, explaining and the talking today because, hey, if I got nothing good to say, don't say it at all. Am I right? Wow, the golden rule. The golden rule. Send us home, Kev. Send us home. That is going to do it for us here at Wrestling Reverb. Make sure you're plugging us into your ears every Friday here on Brain Buster Radio. Make sure you catch all the other fantastic shows on Brain Buster Radio throughout the week as well. A new show drops every single day. Again, that'll do it for me and Josh. Thank you all for tuning in, and you have a great weekend. Peace out.